Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another 3D Hangouts. I'm Noah, designer here at Adafruit. Joining me every week, my brother, Pedro. What's up, man? What's going on, everybody? I'm Pedro as the creative tech here at Adafruit, and every week we come to share 3D printing projects featuring electronics from Adafruit. This is the show where we combine 3D printing, DIY electronics, put them together, make some cool projects to inspire you folks at home. Pedro, what's on the show today? We got a jam-packed show. We got a brand new 3D printer. Oh, my God, another 3D printer? Yeah, another one, finally. One that doesn't have a bed that moves, <laughs> completely messing up your prints. We have our favorite Cartesian style printer. It is a Replicator 2 clone. Oh my goodness, open Finally. source. Dual print, Ninja Flex right out of the box. We'll take a look at it we'll more. We'll talk more about it in, a, in a, just a minute. But first, we got our first segment, our first thing that we do, pay some bills. To write 10% off every week, use the uh, coupon code for this week, Tumble. In celebration of our chess This week's piece. project, chess. Adafruit Chess is out, folks. It's on Thingiverse. We got a guide for you as well. Go with a couple tips on tumbling and <laughs> tumbling tips. Yeah. So um, two hundred dollars or more, you get free shipping, and of course, use ten percent off discount code Tumble. Doesn't work on software or gift certificates, and expires at eleven fifty nine p.m. tonight. So yeah. definitely take advantage of that if you need to load up on filament printers or. That's right, color fab filament, and copper fill, and bronze fill. That's and what of we course, use in the show. Electronic or boards or any yeah. components you'll need to bring your projects to life. Okay. Go ahead and start the show off with what are you prototyping? Yeah, that's where we take a look at some of the stuff we're working on in the background. We'll jump out of that and into shop talk. That's right, so when we take a look at some of the goings on, we're talking about the new printer we got in the back. Okay, and then we have a QA for you folks, that's YouTube right. questions. Every week you guys ask us some questions and we'll answer them live. Well, not live, recorded. It's, it's alive. <laughs> it's live right now, I'm alive. And then after that, we'll do 3D printing news. That's right. It's when we take a look at some of the awesome uh, makes by our community. Alrighty. Let's take a look at our first segment here. We're going to do prototyping stuff. We got an overhead over here. And let's go ahead and fade in. OK, so <laughs> every week I have to do that. I have to be upside down every week. OK, so <laughs> last week we were talking about the 7-inch portable display. Um, that has a built-in power boost, so we can have a nice little 250 milliamp lipo battery inside there. And I was showing off how it didn't work on a camera, on a Canon camera or whatever HDMI you told camera. told us not to, 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 to build this project if you wanted to make a DIY monitor. So I'm going to have to retract DSLR. that. Um, every time we have to build a project, we always have to build it twice, so we can do the assembly and the photos and the video for that. the most optimal wiring. Yeah, so after I built my second one, it turns out that I might have had a faulty first um, board on the display because it works perfect on you know all the cameras. I hooked it up to the laptop and, of course, the Raspberry Pi. How did you and figure this perfect. out? You just plugged it in for sure? I just plugged it in just to make sure that there was nothing wrong with the first you know, set of um, and well, the whole that I had. Something might be wrong. I don't think it's... I don't know. I mean, it works like with e a Pi. something, yeah. It works with the any other type of HDMI thing mm -hmm. um, so it was just a weird cropping issue that you would get in that unit so if you so folks are experiencing right something yeah. the same what would you recommend so this is um, a lot of people sometimes complain on prices but this is what you're paying for you're paying for an ability to return things and Solid obviously customer service huh? yeah and of course we manufacture the boards in-house and all the software libraries that's what you guys are paying for so definitely check this out if you want to build a bigger uh, monitor, uh, camera monitor. Yeah. How is this setup? different from the five inch display that you So the built? five inch display is a little bit smaller and it has a, it's powered through regular camera batteries. So we have a Ubic on the back here. You can add, and you can definitely add that to this. Just um, grab the solid files and add all of the uh, geometry to that. We have Very the files cool. inside the five inch uh, source files for that. Now this is battery powered, it's portable. What kind of, um, how much Two time and a half get? hours without cutting any of the traces for the backlighting on there, which would let you reduce it to gain a little bit more power. So you don't even have to do that. I totally forgot to do this on there, and when I was testing the time on there, it lasted you know, two and a half hours. That's awesome. So you can have something that's brighter than the five inch, and obviously a lot more bigger than the display that you get on the back of your camera. We have two um, three-fourths to quarter 20 adapters, so you can add something like a shoe mount or a regular standard tripod. 
So this is what we're using to connect this to the top of the camera here. All it's right. easy, just slips into any hot shoe on there like that. It's almost bigger than the DSLR itself, so it's got a nice it's sort of ratio thing Such a nice um, size for yeah, doing any face. preview, yeah. setting, framing up your shots. And of course, it also works on um, something like your laptop here. So one of sure. my favorite things to do is to use it as a uh, Twitter stream. Oh, cool. So you can have just Twitter, like, right? uh, I just have like your Twitter stream on there while you're like working on whatever. Um, this is such a perfect, uh, the resolution on it is a little weird. It's 800 by 480. 480 yes. But it uh, displays in so portrait wide. view. Yeah, it just looks a little funky here because of the, um, the exposure, but it sure. looks phenomenal on yeah, there. That's great. Writing, um, brightness. So this um, is a non-touch version. We do have one that does have touch, and we're definitely gonna make a Pi tablet out of this. So that would, ooh, wouldn't that be cool awesome. if you could, you know, have this all touch screen? <laughs> Are you faking that? This is completely fake, but you can it just sort of so imagine real. what it would look like with yeah. the Raspberry Pi in here. It's just a portable little. Uh, yeah, I think tablet. the thickness would be about the same as well. I think that's how thick I have the Kippa Pi. Yeah. So the ports will probably come out on this side, and. Um, should be able to only have one of the tripod mounts on there, but that should be enough. Yeah, sure. But definitely look out for that one. If you, of course, want to build this, don't pay full price. Okay, I was going to ask about uh, oh. the traces. Any details that you want to tell oh, us? Oh, yeah, about? we already mentioned that. Oh, okay. um, no need to cut the traces. If you can, it'll definitely increase Help your them. power Ooh. light. Yeah, your so power if you life. want more power, yeah, if you want more uh, battery time. Yeah, and all it, it does is dim the the the. By a substantial yeah. amount, like half. Or There's something. two 50 milliamps and a, a 125 milliamp one, yeah. so you can. Could dim you it by optionally, that amount. you know, tie them up to a, a slide switch or something? Yeah, so that's what, actually what we did to the um, to the five inch one. Let me just quickly grab it, sure. so you can see the difference in what those look like. So this is the um, the camera battery adapter that we sell in the shop as well, and you can totally turn that into that. Like I was saying before, okay. just grab the geometry off of this file for the mounting screws on there, and then you just need the UBIC that is actually uh, converting the 7.2 um, volts out of the camera. And, uh, the, we have cam uh, sure. Canon, Nikon. Panasonic, and Nikon oh, um, adapters, well. and a Sony one too. Mm. Actually, wow. I think instead of Panasonic, it's Sony. Yeah. yeah. So you can definitely do that. And what you were talking about was the dimming on there. So yeah, you can have an additional slide okay. switch to have it dim. Pretty cool. A lot of different options for you folks. So if you want to customize it, we encourage you to customize it, make it fit. Whatever application you're working on, for us, we just wanted sort of the bare, simple one. Very yeah, cool. just to give you an idea of the screen size on that. Yeah, I mean, this it's still is way bigger. <laughs> yeah. And the brightness of this is way brighter than the yeah. five inch. So cool. definitely pick that up if you need an additional monitor for your Pi, laptop, or Our camera. Can folks pick this up today and uh, check out the, the guide? The guide is already live for this. Awesome. And the STL files are up there as well, so you can go ahead and build this. This comes out next week, the video okay. for this, so you can check that out. All right, um, folks. Well, you can get 10% off if you want to pick up the screen or the power boost or even the battery. Mm -hmm. It's all native for shop. Get yourself 10% off if you use coupon code TUMBLE. That's right, only works on bits. No, no. <laughs> Atoms, not bits. It works on bits. <laughs> no coupons or. Um, you mean gift certificates? Gift certificates, certificates or coupon. software. Yeah. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay, so, you know, that's what we're working on. Um, there's more stuff in the works, of course, in the background that we'll cover in next week. But for now, that is our prototyping segment. Why don't we go ahead and jump into our shop talk segment? This is where we talk about some things that are going on in the shop. This weekend that passed, Pedro, you upgraded the printer bot. This is the printer bot plus, and particularly you updated the extruder. This is the printer bot aluminum extruder version two. Pedro, tell us a little bit about this. Yeah, so this is their updated sort of Ninja Flex. They're the answer to printing Ninja Flex and having a little bit more uh, grip on the filament extruder. What it does is cut down the distance from where the drive gear is to where the hole that the um, that leads into the nozzle. Let's take a look here. Okay, so perfect. So this is a all aluminum machine. That's what the kit comes with. Mm -hmm. um, it comes with uh, the arm, the mount, a couple of screws, I believe. Yeah, and it doesn't come with uh, little gear teeth. So this is a closer look of what. It, what you're actually getting the upgrade, um, what it has. Okay. See that little bit there, that little little triangle sort of little thing. Little pinch, yeah. That little pinch thing is so that the Ninja Flex doesn't go out of the bearings and sort of start buckling and you know wrapping around. Okay, so this is particularly 
um, designed to improve sort of NinjaFlex um, printing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you just continue on there, it's just a simple little um, reattaching everything. Unfortunately, you have so to So this doesn't come with the nozzle the, off. It does not come with the nozzle or the uh, the gear the gear drive. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just the arm and the mount, I believe? Yeah. Okay. Play on that and you can see Sorry. a little bit more of that. Talk over that. Yeah, so it's a simple installation. Um, the, uh, you just have to assemble all of the um, little bearings that, that push up against the filament and the drive gear. Does the kit come with everything you need? Or? So this kit, um, I'm glad I bought two because one of the kits did not right. have okay. the little, as you can see in the photo there, the, the nut that actually holds the spring together. Um, oh. They forgot to add one in one of the kits. And the, the one that was already on there, the, uh, the nut for that doesn't fit on there. It's okay, a, so it's they a used, threading? They used a smaller nut actually, so it won't even fit inside there. Mm. So luckily, if you keep playing, um, I did have their older gear tooth, and you can pause there. Oh. This yeah, is what I they were. This, this yeah. is what I thought they were gonna release, um, right. but I guess it didn't work since th th the only one they have still on the shop is a, a 3D printed. This is a bit different version because yeah, I had to 3D print the the actual mounting uh, and arm. Mm -hmm. um, now it's machine. Could you combine the two? It's, you can't combine the two. No, this is what stopped me from actually using it was because it was 3D printed parts holding a nozzle, which is mm. you know. An arm. Yeah, we're not. It's, the, it's, it's a big fan on those. Yeah, so, so luckily they did have one of those tiny little nuts in there, and I was able. Oh. To so you just salvaged it. Spare for really there. it. Okay. Cool. So, so there uh, it yeah, is. that's what it looks like. It's just a tiny little thing, and it how holds well does the spring it, in there. How well does it uh, extrude NinjaFlex? No buckling? Did you experience any buckling? No, no. Uh, well, right off the bat, no. But of course, when you do, when you touch the nozzle at all, it's always going to mess with your Z. Oh, of course. Offset. You, you got an offset there, so you had, so to, had to go back in there and figure the out Z what. Probe level? Yeah. So okay. after we figure that out, um, it's still. Um, so before I did it, it still buckled before, and you can see the type of buckling that it's doing. It's very. Oh, that's not it, too it's, bad. It's not as Usually bad as it, it was before. It gets it up a couple yeah, times. Yeah, it gets coiled around the uh, the oh, gear, man. and then you're just ranking it out. Wow. So okay. this is definitely a lot better, but um, How yeah, about after the... after you <laughs> relevel the, okay. the Z offset right. on there, it does extrude and. Uh, it does it pretty good. Now, what about print settings and? Um, so the settings we had to print speed. at thirty millimeters for the print speed. Okay, I left the travel good. at sixty millimeters on the X and Y. All right. The How heat about, yeah. was at two thirty. If I went any lower than that, it would uh, not extrude at all. It yeah, would well, just start. Um, we don't recommend skipping. going lower than two thirty, especially on NinjaFlex. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the tra retraction? retraction is turned off. Okay, that's what you're supposed to do. And the the bed isn't heated at all here. Okay, so it's so we got good uh, adhesion to the bed. What about yeah. adhesion to the layers? What are the layers? Oh, the like? layer adhesion is pretty good. The only thing that's uh, not iffy? good is the um, surface the quality? quality of the surface. Yeah. yeah. So as you can see there, you can go back to the end of that clip. Well, you can show us over in the overhead, right? Yeah. Let's just go ahead and cut to the overhead. It has a lot of bubbling and like there's air or something that got in there. You can clearly see it here. Let me go ahead and switch our, uh, our our focus point. There we go. That's set to the closest. Yeah, so okay, this is so the printer bot. And you yeah. can see what I'm talking about here, the rough sort of edges on there. It looks like there's like a lot of uh, air bubbles or something in there. It's, a bit it's of pretty a texture, rough. Spongy looking almost. Yeah. Um, okay, try to pull it apart. Does it? Oh no, the layer apart? bonding is pretty good. Okay, but the layer bonding is fine. It's just yeah, a it's little just the, bit of like a... the texture of it. Um, no. Most people might think uh, this is good quality, but this is not at all what we're used to seeing out of something like a replicator to clone that we will soon talk about. And this is the finish that's on this guy. Oh wow! And it's like very night straight. and day, very yeah. nice. There's very gradations, smooth, yeah. um, super smooth. Um, there's no air bubbles at all in there. What about the, the speed? Can you compare the slice settings real quick? Okay, so the slice difference? settings on the uh, Flash Forge Creator Pro was at 45, um, 45 millimeters a second for the print speed, and the travel rate is at 90. Okay. So definitely Same faster. Same extruder uh, temperature. We're at 230. 230 for the uh, for the extrude temperature, and okay. yeah, you can kind of see the difference on that. So the 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 design of the extruders are. Definitely different. Yeah, it might be how the length of the the nozzle, the heat zone, um, mm. and the fan blower. The fan blower, yeah. The, the printer bot doesn't have a uh, blower fan, okay. so 
Yeah, those are things that make a ginormous difference in quality of uh, Ninja Flex. Okay, well, it's we weren't able to print Ninja Flex before on the printer bot. Now we kind of can. It's uh, yeah, probably for this it's particular definitely part. Definitely recommended the upgrade. Yeah, okay, so you recommend you, the upgrade if you absolutely need to print on Ninja Flex. Um, there's no other way around it. You can uh, pick it up at uh, printerbot.com. It's it's going for fifty five dollars. Um, it's supposed to come with everything. Uh, I guess you could hit up if you didn't come with everything. You could. I'm just, sure they'll hook you up with a yeah, little nut. It's just that you know, right. eleven you know or whatever late at night that we're so, putting this together. Sure. So if you have the Printerbot Plus and you're looking to print some. Ninja Flex, uh, you recommend it, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, like I said, the it works. And the little plastic parts adapters that we made before in a previous Much episode. Than those, right? Yeah, those are really hard to print since so you need ABS and you needed such a fine um, precision printer to be able to print it. Okay. So um, this is the only route really to go. Okay. So that is printing NinjaFlex on printer bots. This should work on the simple and the plus. They include um, the uh, oh, okay, screws so for that. So One thing I saw the on the website is that um, it only fits um, one. Oh, if you have a dual extruder uh, printer bot, you, you got to specifically say that because I'm sure they're like smaller or something. Yeah. So. yeah, so just get the details from their site if you're looking to yeah. upgrade. Okay. okay. Well, that's cool. Um, you were telling us about that Flash Forge Creator Pro. So this is something we've been it, we just got this uh, a couple days ago, folks. I think yesterday. Yeah. So <laughs> we, we've been waiting for. This is great. So this is a test a unit that, that we type. got from uh, Flash Forge. So we're potentially going to stock. This is the Creator Pro, like Pedro was saying, the dual extruder. It has a heated bed. Uh, it's got the MK9 extruder. Um, for the build volume, it's got um, 20, 225, 145, 150 by um, 4 millimeter nozzle, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so you can do 100 microns. Um, interesting stuff that it comes with an acrylic uh, cover. Yeah, acrylic so kit. this is a whole hood, so if you're printing um, sen uh, heat sensitive material, you can ensure that the you know, temperature will stay stable inside there. And this is where all the magic happens. This is, I guess, the you know, the, it comes the preferred way to, you know, to spool have spool. Ninja Flex print the most optimal way. Yeah, we're have very this similar to, uh, to the MK8. This is the MK9, a little bit updated, but it does have a spring-loaded drive on both sides. Um, it has a fan blower, um, and it has dual extruder. <laughs> yeah, so this is definitely smarter. This, this dumb extruder is definitely smarter than the supposed smart extruders that MakerBot has. I mean, even though that it can't detect when the filament's running out, it's not going to jam on you <laughs> when you try to, you know, load it. If you in do a get a way. jam, yeah. So <laughs> the only assembly for this printer is to get the uh, is to is to mount the the printer to the to the carriage, mm -hmm. which is very easy. It's just got two screws, um, and it's pretty damn sturdy. Everything about this thing is. Um, it is the quietest printer that we have. Like hmm? I've ever seen, like way quieter than any of the other machines printing at you know the blazing you know. It's in the background, folks. Printing, I, yeah, I don't know if you ninety-one fifty. It, yeah, if we turn up the the printer bot to that, it is the loudest freaking thing you've ever heard. It, yeah. It's something something to do with the the linear the linear rails that are on that mm. it, okay. on the printer bot. Yeah, it's so it's freaking moving loud. The bed and the head. Oh my god, yeah. So it's moving. So you guys know whoever have them out there and it's kind of loud. You know, many maker spaces that have you know a wide variety of different three D printers. This is a known you know sort of fact in, yeah, <laughs> in our world loud. that any replicator two is probably the best build quality uh, for any sort of print actually. Okay. So pretty straightforward to set it up. Very easy to set it up. Um, Everything's all metal, like you were saying. Um, really good construction. Um, oh, built-in LCD screen. It's running uh, Sailfish. So there's a ton of uh, cool little um, updates, software, stuff that you can do to it. Um, it's definitely scriptable. Uh, yeah, it, it has a lot of features that we, we come to accustomed to with the Replicator too. So pause Z height, change filament, Load and unload. Uh, it even has a filament gauge, so it knows how much filament it's used. And it has such revolutionary hardware as such as a freaking piezo. I can't believe no other printer, you know, manufacturers figured out. Oh, let's have audible, you know, notifications on there. I can't believe like you know, like the Type A or the Printer Bot 
you know, plays a sweet little song for you? Before, after, like, to let you know when, you know, okay, the preheat well. is done. Like, I can't believe nobody is, like, even, these are so freaking old and nobody's duplicated that yet. Okay. It's got a couple spare parts as well, folks, so that's really nice to have. Um, one of the things I really like about it is you can adjust the temperature and the speed uh, while it's printing. A lot, a lot of the, uh, the printers can do that, but it's nice to be able to do that on, the, on a sailfish. It's uh, nice to be able to call. walk up to it and, you know, simply do it. Okay. Uh, like you were saying, the little fan, uh, little blower fan is, you know, sort of a champ in how, on why these prints come out so beautifully. And um, yeah, again, having you know scripts that let you simply preheat or change uh, filament during uh, print or set a, a pause Z height so you can like change out your filament or color because it's dual printing. Um, you can potentially have up to like four different materials if you use that option. Mm, wow. Now uh, we just saw the build plate. The build plate is not glass. I thought it was glass. It's fully aluminum, right? Mm -hmm. And what's on the surface? So it came with a build tack sort of material that came with it. Yeah, it's and already it's applied and it has some extra sheets as well. Mm -hmm. um, build tack, we haven't used build tack yet, but if this is a form of blue tack, I like it. It's all, I think it's a lot better than blue painter's tape. Yeah. Uh, or at least for PLA and ABS and, mm -hmm. and other materials. Um, not, so, not so great with Ninja Flex. It seemed to have stuck to Ninja Flex yeah. too well. So we went mm -hmm. ahead and- It might have been because I had the, um, the bed not leveled properly for that. Okay. So um, we'll give it another try. And we'll get another shot. We uh, just got this in yesterday night, so okay. Because uh, a lot more tests to do. So one it. of the first Hello World prints, Pedro always goes for is an upside down printer, <laughs> as always. Yeah, it's uh, the print you're, you, that I already compared this to. So it's the um, Ninja Flex bumper, sure. and as you already saw before, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful in terms of the finished quality. Yeah, compared to like something like a printer bot, and. Uh, there's no retraction turned on on this, and it still did a pretty good job in sort things of like the it. holes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, on the printer bot, yeah, yeah the printer bot definitely melted, melted that. There's a flash. This is no on. cleanup, too, folks. So obviously, it needs every Ninja Flex part needs cleanup. We talk about that. Oh yeah, always. Okay. And, um, That's all that we have part. right now. At first, um, mm -hmm. I have a D20 and stuff that I printed. Looks phenomenal. Um, we we went it up against uh, the Rep2. And it was really more of like Rep2 with MakeAware versus the, the Flash Creator Pro and Simplify 3D. Simplify 3D does a really good job of optimizing mm -hmm. toolpaths and yeah. making it really nice. Um, I don't have the parts right here, but they're really cool. Do you want yeah, the retraction grab them is uh, phenomenal. Right yeah, you can definitely see the, the uh, difference in it. Okay, so this is a replicator. Hold that up, sure. please, and then hold this one up. Yeah, I wanted to show a seam part. They're, they're different parts, though, unfortunately. Yep. Yeah. This is, yeah, there's another one of these parts that really shows sort of the retraction. So this is out of the Flash Creator Pro. There's really no uh, cleanup necessary here. Um, all of the edges here are super nice. There's no uh, seams. There's no like sort of seams that are uh, overlapping each other. And if, when and you if look you at the, see the, the numbers, are all indented. So there's a ton of overhang. Oh yeah, it prints flat like that. It prints like that. And um, this is a future collab project with Phil B. We've talked about a little bit about. But show us that seam that you get on the on the pr on the MakerBot Rep2 using MakerWare. Sure. Let me get in there and focus for you. Yeah, so you can see the seam that is always present in a, a ton bit of, of the holes prints. As well. yeah. Oh, holy! And then oh, if holy. we check out the completely flash smooth. forge, it is way smoother. Yeah. And you can it's see phenomenal. that there's no um, what do you call it? seams on that one. Did you show us the inside of the standoffs and stuff? Like how it's, there's still a little bit of string and stuff there. Yeah, you can see the string. Yeah, so this the is a replicator too, yeah, too, and this is the flash forge. Again, the differences uh, could also be because. This is MakerWare and Simplify 3D. Right on. Sorry about that. Focusing. Do you want me to manually focus? Oh, oh yeah, no, I thought no. that's what you're doing, yeah. No, I wasn't. There you go, you can see the <laughs> difference on that. All right. Well, very cool. So we'll be uh, testing it for the next couple of weeks. We'll most likely put together a review, and yeah. we're hoping to stock it in the Adafruit shop soon. Yeah, I'm a little tired of not having a printer that 
has repeal a bit, yeah, reliable, repeatable. Um, high yields. High yields, yeah, so I see with like uh, the printer bots, we'll have, we'll have like a perfect print that comes out of it and then we go to print another one and all of a sudden it's not leveled anymore, the print settings are somehow messed up when we're printing the exact same file that you know just came out perfect. Okay, well folks, we encourage you, let us know uh, if there's any questions you have on the Flash Creator Pro, if there's anything you'd like us to test, any specific materials. If you've been thinking about one, let us know what, you'd lo what you would test print first. We definitely want to hear from you guys. Definitely. Okay, that has been uh, our Shop Talk segment. Got a new printer, yeah. <laughs> yes, finally, dual yeah, head, cool. enclosed, yeah, we're into flex, test a lot out of, of the box. Exclusion. Definitely. Um, uh, this leads us into being able to test really cool things like conductive filament. So sure, and, and blending, like you said, four materials together. Yeah, it's everybody always fun. asks about that, and yeah, there's uh, there's always stuff going on in the background yeah. we can't really always talk about, but oh yeah, definitely coming. Okay. Alrighty, next up, folks, we got the Q and A. This is where we answer YouTube questions. That's right. To ask a question, um, just go into any of the videos, you know, leave a, a comment down there, and we'll eventually see it pop up in the studio app. We'll answer your questions right here. First up, this is from Andrew Bevelheimer. What's up, dude? I was wondering if you've ever used XTC 3D coding, and what's your thoughts on it? And what are some reliable, what are some other reliable uh, finishing methods that you found that work with PLA? Good question. Good question. So um, let we, me pull up this. We kind of covered this uh, very briefly in the Super Game Pie build. If you check out the learning guide on that, there is a section that uh, specifically talks about the finishing techniques using X3. XDC. Yeah, so uh, we used it for this project, and I did a couple other other tests, um, but I definitely want to try it out uh, more. Uh, the main thing that I, the main issue I kept getting was just it's hard to get rid of air bubbles. It's a two-part epoxy that is usually the hard thing to do is to get rid of bubbles. There's some tips and techniques on their website, and I'm sure there's other folks that's made some, some things. But as far as the review, we do have uh, a couple of. Um, we do saying? have a couple of clips that we could put together and edit for. Um, so yeah, we'll just a couple just tips. You, they're pretty much here that. in the guide, but um, uh, man, was the tip was it? The tip brush there, the, the cheap kind that of brush. The chip brush wasn't a really good way to go because we weren't yeah. able to eliminate all the brush strokes. On and there. I would leave some hairs would get left oh, on yeah, there yeah. and things. So, so yeah, uh, as far as, it, as just adding it to on top without any sanding, you get a better result when you sand it first and then apply it. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's some details there too, like sanding it, it turns a little bit more gray, lightens it up a bit. Yeah, and bring I ended up like chalky. doing it, I, I did like a couple of ways where I, I sanded it first, applied it, sanded it again, then applied it again. That seemed to work a lot. Definitely a little bit too much time consuming than I'd like, especially on a big part like, uh, like the Super Game Pie enclosure. It's pretty big. Uh, for smaller stuff, I'm sure it'll work really well. Um, and then I tried it again with no sanding. It seemed to just give it a, a nice sort of glossy finish, but yeah. you could still see the layers and ridges and things. But that's what we've done so far with XTC. Um, if you want to uh, find out more, uh, you know, definitely check out some sources on YouTube. Maybe yeah. there's some things there. We're going to revisit this a little bit later too. Um, any? Did you try it out on anything yet? Uh, no, I think this is the only thing we tried it out on. Yeah. Oh okay. no, we tried it on like a statue or something. And, yeah, you're right. And as you said, it just we didn't sand it, it down, yeah. Yeah, um, unfortunately, it doesn't do like you like a acetone vapor bath. It doesn't make it that you know get rid of the layers. Well, that's the actually way it does good that. sometimes. An acetone vapor bath. That's another method. I don't know if it's that's too ABS, reliable, though. mainly because it gets really messy. Your tolerances will differ. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the details will diminish a bit. Yeah, um, this is definitely a yeah. way to go if you don't want any of that def Very, deformation going uh, on. Very, you know, sketchy kind of. You know, vapors. <laughs> yeah. You got to do it in a well ventilated area. Yeah, we'll definitely area. revisit this. Uh, thanks for the question. Okay. Yeah. And if there's any other finishing techniques, let us know about it. Um, oh, one last one was the tumbling PLA. Can you tumble PLA? Yeah. So I have heard people, and we tried it once. We just tumbled some gray PLA mm -hmm. inside of the brass um, screw uh, tumbler and with that, brass screws. With brass yes. screws, and that worked out pretty good. It impregnated it yeah, uh, quite that, a bit. Give that a try too. Tumbling might be. Tumbling we find is 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 it definitely takes time, but effort wise, you, you just get to toss them in there, and just check yeah, them on. Just get to yeah, do something else. So, yeah. yeah, sanding and stuff is 
It's not the finest oh, thing. Oh man, your back yeah. will start hurting, yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, thank you for the question, Andrew. Hopefully that uh, is an okay answer. <laughs> Next one. This one is on the uh, last week's video. Hey, cool project. How about the battery life? And what's the price? Would be convenient if you had mentioned it in the video. Yeah, sure, totally. So uh, for the battery life, it depends on what you do. But I was playing um, retro game, retro game Pi, a couple of emulators for a good hour and a half before the battery died, and that was on a full charge. So we we're looking at about uh, yeah two hours and a half on a twenty five hundred milliamp battery. So that's kind of like the same like this. One amp, it draws. I think it draws one amp. Um, now as far as the price, uh, I have here. Uh, so one way to get the price. Obviously, is to go to the learning guide and click on the on the cart. And this is what the price is. It's 126 bucks for all the pieces. But if you already have a Raspberry Pi, you know you can get rid of that. So uh, really, it's going to be sort of a dynamic price. If you don't have any of the parts, you know you're, you got to. This is the price of it. Um, but the cool thing is, you don't have to pay full price. You can get yourself 10 percent off. That's right. This is why we never give away the the prices for anything because you get 10% discount it's every terrible. Wednesday and yeah. Thursday and all the parts that we list on there, maybe you have some of those just lying around. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't want an audio thing. You don't need audio. You can nick off like 10 bucks if you don't want that. Mm -hmm. um, if you want a smaller battery or so. Because all of our projects are completely customizable, yeah. your prices are customizable as well and then like we get different uh, suppliers, prices might go up or might go down, so we just can't pin down a price that'll yeah. you know, be forever you know, burnt into that you know, video. So. High quality parts, documentation. Libraries, you're paying for libraries. Documentation <laughs> too, yeah. um, that goes hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Quality parts, customer service, if something's wrong, we will help you out. Code, again, and example projects that actually work. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. That's uh, that's how much it is, and I, I guess in the, in the future we'll try to incorporate that more into the. Into we'll the have to um, sort of uh, explain this again why we're not saying prices. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, thank you for the question. Hopefully, that's a good answer for you. Next one. This one's from Kevy. Hey. Uh, yeah, same question. This was on the layer by layer a couple weeks ago. What is the benefit of going back to step one to make a change if that change doesn't propagate to the final model? Yeah. So this is uh, I was uh, this is the first video of me sort of checking out CAD versioning, which uh, is pretty helpful. Now, though, um, what I forgot to mention is that you can do that. Um, you can also capture design history. So that's really nice. So you can, mm -hmm. have, you can definitely uh, bring the, the change back up to the, the previous model. Um, I'll put together a video on that. But if you'd like more, definitely check out uh, Autodesk Fusion's channel on YouTube. There's quite a bit to check out there. Yes, definitely subscribe to their YouTube feed. There's always new videos yeah. every other day, something like that. Okay, well, thank you for the question. Next up, this is from Van San, Vin San, um, on the Kippa project. How much, oh, this is the same question. How, how much does it cost? We already talked about that. Yeah, it's uh, about 100. With the, with the discount, I guess it's like 113 or so? 113, 113 bucks. something like that. Yeah, yeah that's on if you, you don't need, if you don't have any of the parts and you have solder and an iron and that's all that right. stuff. Yeah. There's the always like, you know, do you have wires? Do you have costs. this? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Cool. So, Again, that's why we don't tell you the price because you may have yeah, things, variable, you yeah. may not have things. Maybe there's Under, extra stuff you don't have. You thought about, yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, thanks for the question, Vincent. Next up, this is the last one from Dem Nob. <laughs> Dem Nod. I second the question. What keyboard is that? This is on the Kippa project. A lot of people ask us, "What keyboard is that?" So let's go ahead and answer that first. What keyboard is that? This is the Kano keyboard, which you might have seen. They had, it is. Uh, I think there was a crowdfunding Oops. thing or something, but it's or, they've already you did think all it their was background. A card <laughs> yeah, they, they, these are already for sale. We funded it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think we did. No. Um, <laughs> this was after they already did all that stuff. So 150 yeah, bucks for 50 the bucks kit. Comes the with the Raspberry Pi 2. It comes with a custom distribution of, uh, of, of Kano. Mm hmm. Kind of Very cool. So this is of. definitely one of those initiatives to have kids learn how to code. So if you never do any like donations or any volunteering or anything like that, you can at least do that. Is that you your get way yourself of donating? A, yeah. a you know, pretty badass cool little team. Pi keyboard, which is you know has like the best trackpad on any um, sort of built-in keyboard we've ever used. Can I, like, I buy it separately? A hundred people asked. I don't 
think so, but go to Kano's website and tell them that you want to buy it separately, and then maybe they'll consider it. Yeah, or just donate, you know, to, it's a good cause to you know, have kids learn how to uh, program. Sure. So yeah, it has a cool little uh, USB charging cable that, you know, nicely folds into the back yeah, there. Beautiful keyboard layout. I, I really like... Um, Custom injection molded. Shows the keys too. Uh, you have Bluetooth on there so that you can hook this up to a regular computer. I don't know if it's Bluetooth, it's just a wireless dongle thing. Uh, no, it says Bluetooth oh, right there. Oh, wonderful. Okay, cool. It is Bluetooth, folks. It has Bluetooth and a dongle as well. Is it the Bluetooth dongle? Uh, I don't... Think so. Oh, okay. It's just USB. So yeah. it's it's dual. That's great. Yeah. Pretty cool there, and of course has a built-in key. battery. The, the keys. keys are nice yeah. and clicky. So the black keys here, you usually do not see something like this where the the left and right buttons are the, the mouse. A couple of uh, function keys are particular to the Pi. Mm -hmm. Definitely yeah, check it I out like if it. you're on the lookout for a very awesome, uh, worthy cause and awesome hardware that comes along with it. Yeah. Second part of the question, what about a slightly larger screen like the one I purchased for my Pi B Plus? He has the Tontech 10.1 10, uh, 10 inch high resolution screen, 1280 by 800 LCD screen. And would it work with the parts uh, that you have listed but with a different case, obviously? That really depends on your LCD. If your LCD uh, uses the, uh, the T TTL protocol with, and it uses a 40 pin FPC connector, then it might work. Um, the Kippa is designed to work with uh, the two LCD, the two TFT displays that we have. T they use TTL protocol as well, and they have a 40 FPC pin connector, and that's what the Pi uses, or the Kippa uses. Um, but since you mentioned a bigger LCD screen, we do have a bigger one in the shop as well. I don't out. remember what the product ID for is for this. That's but fine. You can just search for it. We Oops. will definitely be working on a bigger laptop. Here's the screen they're going to be a using. Laptop. Yeah, a little Raspberry Pi top, a real Raspberry Pi top. Not like Can we call it a, a, a tablet, a Raspberry Pi tablet maybe? No, this will be the tablet. This oh, will okay. be like the bigger. Because it's not touch screen, screen, right? No, this is not touch screen. OK. But, well, yeah. folks, if you want to see a Raspberry Pi laptop, let us know, and uh, we'll get working on that project. That this is, is already upcoming. <laughs> oh, yeah? <laughs> you don't have to tell us. We already know we have to make this. Oh. <laughs> but this will th be uh, upcoming soon, so be on the lookout for that. Okay, I hope that answers your question. Um, you really got to bust open your LCD and see if it find uses out what, a 40 yeah, connection PC. Are. If not, if there's an HDMI, of course, it'll work that way. Yeah. Um, but really, the Kippa is designed to work with the Adafruit LCDs that, are, that Lamar handpicked. Okay, that's going to be it for the questions, folks. Thank you so much for your questions. Remember, you can ask us any questions on any of the videos that you see. Just jot down some notes on any of those videos, and we will see those bubble up okay. eventually. Cool. Well, that's it for the Q&A. We're going to jump in now into some 3D printing news. So let's check out what the community is working on this week. Oh, man, this is an awesome project. Really love this one. This is from Jozo. Jozo has done a couple different remixes of the Raspberry Pi Game Boy projects. And this one, brand new one, this one is really cool, really small, small as you can get it. The goal was to like, how can I make it as small as possible? Jozo totally did it up. Tell me a little bit about this while I get so to this. So this is a 75% reduction size compared to the original Game Boy Classic. It's influenced by the SNES controller using four buttons and a bigger D-pad. Um, to achieve this, he had to rip all the pin sockets that came with the Pi TFT and replace them with cut down IC sockets. And yeah, yeah. he even took out the Raspberry Pi pins, uh, so he shortened those up so that the tallest components that were left on the Pi were the USB and the HDMI uh, ports. So you've actually had some experience doing this before. Um, the first actual build of the Little Pocket Pi. Um, no, this is a Super Game Pie. The Super Game Pie, yeah. Yeah, you yeah and Phil so B were actually gonna do yeah, this. We, yeah, we at the time the A plus was like two weeks before getting out, and uh, we were working on the Super Game Pie project, and it made sense to make it smaller. So we were gonna get rid of the uh, the, the Ethernet and the the four USB, USB. ports and just use single USB ports. Um, it is a very difficult project. Um, he ended up making Phil B ended up making a really nice guide. So if you want to slim down, uh, it, Your A plus, you know. You can totally do that. And two, two, no, it's for the B. Oh, it's for, for the B. For oh, the, right. the B+. Um, and then the A-plus came out, and I was like, oh, well, there you go. <laughs> uh, but no, this is really cool. Uh, definitely um, 
very hard to do. Um, but it definitely shrinks down the size considerably. Down the size like we still have two of those in the garage we could totally use on something. Sure. Um, I think the trick was to uh, have two people. Yeah, right. <laughs> one okay. one have the... Yeah, the heat, the heat iron, the, uh, the airflow station plus yeah. the soldering iron. One person holding the, so the... One person doing the soldering and pulling and the other person just with the heat over yeah. it seemed to help. So we mistakenly found that one out because I was like, hey, Pedro. Yeah, this is hard, man. Yeah, so definitely uh, let's go back to the controller here, uh, completely customized. Yeah, this is awesome. So the controller it, uh, has a chip on it, and it's, you plug it in, it, it, it thinks it's a USB uh, keyboard. So this HID, plugs right yeah. into the, to the Raspberry Pi. It thinks it's an HID, yeah, USB keyboard. So all these um, are pretty much running as if it was a keyboard. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. So you can use it on not just your Pi, but your computer and other things, too. I really love the uh, very awesome, optimized, simple design yeah. of this. Very cool. I, lo I love the little bend here. Mm -hmm. It's the bend that uh, you would see in the original Game Boy. So there it is with the next to the... Oh, just look so how small it is. Awesome, Incredible, yeah. man. Incredible. Very awesome job. Yeah, Jozo. Jozo did it up. Really cool, a really smart idea, too, to get this going here. So mm -hmm. it like, plugs in just to the pins that you need. You can, of course, um, it's quarter for scale. get all of the files needed to... Build your very own on his Thingiverse page. Oh, yeah. Check that out. All the instructions are all there. Yep. Very awesome job. Thank you so much, Joseph, for sharing this one. Very cool. Okay. Next up, Next we up. have. We uh, talked a lot about tumbling, tumblers, tumble. Yeah, so this is a coupon code. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So um, this is by, I can't pronounce his name, Jor George Tor Torhoff. Jorog <laughs> Torhoff. So this was designed specifically sure. to tumble 3D printed parts featuring, you know, color fab filaments. Oh, cool. So he loves bronze fill, brass fill, and copper fill. And um, he wanted to make an affordable under 40 euro in parts little tumbler that, you know, works just like a, a professional one. Exactly. Does That's the exact same this. thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so all cool. this doing so is just spinning a wheel and tumbling for hours on end. So he thought he can, you know, make a pretty optimized one. Uh, you can get all the files for this on his Umage um, page, all the instructions, and I think you he has like... You imagine. You manage. You, you manage. You manage. Uh, he also has an instructable as well, so he has all the details on how to uh, build one of these uh, yourself. Okay. This is uh, definitely, it's uh, 40 euros, so it's like half the price of what um, uh, a professional, professional one, you know. Okay. So cost. you could totally make one yourself, folks. If you want to pick up some hardware, get yourself the tumbler, or the the barrel itself. Mm -hmm. um, what about the DC motor? Did you repurpose it or anything? Uh, it says on the instructions. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So Very definitely cool. check that out if you want to build your own. All right, folks. Tumbler. Okay. Next up, this one is very cool use of Thingiverse's customizer app. So this is a data, uh, a parametric data cable maker. Yeah, so this is from Thingiverse user Ohm, and he uh, really wanted to just use ordinary cables. He just wanted to repurpose all the cables that he had around for all of his Arduino projects. Oh, it's like projects. a Cat5 or something, yeah, because mm -hmm. it has a bunch of cables in the Cat5 already. So that is so cool. Yeah, so he mentioned this isn't the perfect solution. I mean, you're going to be soldering and gluing, but it's probably cheaper if you want to repurpose the spare cables. Um, and he has a cool little video here on showing the construction of this. Uh, this was all made in OpenSCAD. Um, this is his first project in there, so he is open to any you know fixes in the code or any changes that you may want to do. Future requests, folks. So definitely, if you're uh, interested in this, out. check it out. Yeah, pretty cool. Excuse me. <coughs> oh, wow. A little bit of super glue. Yeah. Okay. Fun. Make your own uh, data cable. Very cool. Yeah, now we were just talking about this the other day too, and wow, check it out. Somebody's already done it. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, Awesome. Very cool. Very awesome way to repurpose your cables. Great use of the customizer app, too, and, and OpenSCAD parametric mm -hmm. modeling. OK. All right, next up, we have a 3D oh. printed. Oh, 3D printed something. You know it's 3D printed, 3D printed Geiger counter. OK, so this is a Geiger counter from Conrad. It's up on Thingiverse, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Using parts exclusively from SparkFun. Um, this was designed sort of just to be a Geiger counter. Uh, it's using the code from the microview screen. So he tweaked it a little bit, modified it using SparkFun's code. Yeah, and a couple of additions that he's going to be adding soon is um, audio. something, yeah, audio, so you can um, see feedback on it, and adding a little speaker in there. So the orange one is what he built. There it is. And the next one, folks, this is a pocket one, 400 bucks. Yeah. This one costs 150 bucks. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Um, so how does it? 
Okay, so you're telling me the audio is, is usually you get audio feedback. He's working on that. Um, it has a battery which will, will last portable. a couple hours. Yeah, d definitely check out his Thingiverse pay page if you okay. want to get all the files to build your own. Well, that is awesome. And okay. then last but not least is this very cool light um, photon little tiny printer. Oh, man. I almost skipped that one. Thank you for bringing that. Let's see if we can manage to find it. Probably not. <laughs> Okay. Go. This is the cutest little laser engraver that we've ever seen. It looks like the Cupcade almost. The Cupcade? Yeah, so this is That's by New Zealand um, uh, designer, uh, I can't even pronounce his name either. Islot. Islot. Yeah, it's a photon printer, um, 3D printable laser engraver. Oh man, this is so cool. So we recycled his DVD drive. He had an old HP. Uh, workstation just kind of lying around, ripped it out and repurposed it to make a la you know a, a laser engraver. So yeah. he's laser engraving on uh, wood, yeah, and so he's getting uh, some really nice precision. I, I think know. somewhere in here. Yeah, yeah here's here's wow. so you're using G code right to to do the tool pathing, and and there's just a Check sample. Out the resolution of that. Incredible, yeah. It's like a vector uh, it's illustration. So awesome. It's cool that. Um, I just really like the design of it. It's, like, it's mini and portable. You shut it and look at the inside. It's yeah. being run by um, Arduino it's either Nano. a Nano or a Micro. I'm not sure, folks. I think he says it's a Nano. Okay. And a couple fans in the back there, but very nice. Yeah, so he uh, talks a uh, lot of cool tips on the uh, instructions page on Thingiverse. It's a 2X DVD drive. Uh, it's a light scribe drive that he just ripped out of his yeah. HP. And so he was so even uh, saying that drives uh, after 2009 um, had some problems, so you want to try to get something that was made before then. But you can feel you can read the full instructions okay. on his instructions page. I think it has an instructable as well. Very you cool. Check that out, and of course, all the files are available to download. Okay. And he has a nice uh, build of materials list to grab all the parts you need. Super, super awesome. All right, and folks. I think that's it for this week's news. Yep. Very I have awesome. One, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but I have one last thing. We're gonna jump back up How to shop. How can talk. we get notified of cool builds? Thingiverse groups. Yeah, I was gonna talk about Thingiverse groups. Thank you for bringing that up. So that's really our shop talk segment. I'm gonna queue up uh, the page here, and we'll take a look now. All right. Folks, you want to check out Thingiverse Groups. Uh, we started this group a little bit ago. This is where you guys can converse, talk about some product, uh, some projects, talk about products, uh, slice settings, anything like that. Uh, quite a few are already joined, 380 members. Um, so definitely add some more topics if you want to guys, if you, if you want something uh, to, for us to talk about on the show, you can show, talk about it there too. Uh, we just set up this uh, this group, which is called the 3D Hangouts group, and this is where we're going to start publishing uh, the projects that we just shared. This was last week. These are all the projects that we shared last week, since most of them are on Thingiverse. We figured we'd throw them up there now. So uh, this is where uh, you can find out uh, where um, what, what projects we're sharing on the show. Yeah, yeah just to alert us, let us know you're working on something cool. Um, there's uh, a couple different avenues that you could take. Uh, a lot of the uh, tips that we get in are um, just from the blog, blog tips. Definitely check out the blog tips. Us uh, searching Send through Thingiverse and of course people tweeting at us. So this is just another way um, that you can get our attention to get featured on the show if you're working right. on something cool. Adafruit has some forms as well so you can yeah, throw them up there as well. Yeah, we get emails from that too on uh, things that people might think that we'd like to share. So okay, there's a couple so things I want to share. Uh, one of the reasons why we like Thingiverse and we encourage you guys to post your make. If you made one of our projects, please post it up. <gasps> Excuse me, I have a lot of hiccups today. Um, over, the, uh, over the 4th of July weekend, a lot of you folks put this together. At least four of different ones were put over the weekend. And that's really cool to see. Uh, this gentleman here made our first uh, two-button one. Everybody likes the four-button one, but somebody did the two-button one. So this is a really cool way um, just to see how, how, ma how many uh, how many projects are being made? And it's sort of like a little achievement. Like, yes, I've done it, and here's, here's, here's the proof of it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, the, rest, the, the libretto, your, your libretto, a couple of people have already put that together, looking really cool. Very cool. We'll expect more people to make that. And of course, the original, or probably the most made project, uh, the original Raspberry Pi Game Boy, Game Girl. This is the latest one here. Looking really, really nice. Oh, nice. I think he made a custom like holder for it. <laughs> That's very cool. So if you guys want to cool. see 
Um, yeah, this is awesome. Oh, cool. Only 13, man. This is really great. <laughs> I'm proud of you too, man. That's very cool. It's not an easy, uh, easy feat. Oh, especially what happened to Bill yeah. or it, it's break up the too. PCB exactly. to make the the yeah I know like the buttons yeah yeah so very cool. So definitely uh, don't forget to tag if you um, mm -hmm. have made. Of course. Yeah, and one other thing, folks. Um, Thingiverse. We're not just on Thingiverse only. We're on other places. We're on Cults 3D as well. So if you folks want to check out Cults, we're on there too. That's where some of our stuff is. Another one, this one is from the folks at uh, Ultimaker. This is Umagine. We've got a couple of things up here. If you folks want us to upload more stuff to Umagine, please let me know. I only have two parts up there. Um, I don't get too much traffic there, to be yeah. honest, folks. That's why uh, most of our stuff is on Thingiverse first. Um, we actually released the Super Game Pie on Umagine first for two weeks. Uh, didn't get much of uh, traction there, so we threw it up on Thingiverse. And and Quite a few got, people yeah. got it. So, uh, but if again, if you guys want us to upload uh, to different places, please let us know. Maybe there's another repo that uh, that you want us to check out. And that's pretty much it, folks. Again, it lets us know that you're working on the projects, and we we want to share uh, your stuff more. So there you go. That's the part two of Shop Talk. I think that's all for this week. That's going to be all for this week, folks. Don't forget coupon code. <laughs> sure. If you're looking coupon to pick code. up any filament, printers, and of course, electronic parts to bring your projects to life, use discount code TUMBLE during checkout. It expires at 11.59 p.m. tonight, and it only works on Adams. OK. All right, folks, so we've got some links for you. Of course, today's uh, weekly project, the chess set, is up on the learn.adafruit.com. So that's where all of the projects go live first. You can get the um, sneak peek at the 7-inch uh, portable display that we showed up at the top of the show. You can get all the parts and the guide to build your own before the video comes out next week. Oh, yeah. You can, of course, also join our Google Plus page. Yeah, 3D Thursday, every Thursday, folks. All the stories that we covered are linked below and on the Adafruit blog and more. There's always more stuff up there as well. And you can, of course, follow me and Pedro on the social accounts. Right. Um, Always the, behind the, the scenes there. Yep, the weekly roundup of shows starts off next week on a Wednesday with Wearable Wednesdays with Becky Stern doing her wearable show. A lot of uh, very cool artsy projects, craft projects, electronics, mm -hmm. uh, project workshop, questions and prizes. Combining it's a party. electronics and wearables. Oh, yeah. So check it awesome. out. It's on every Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, and then later that day, near the night. Uh, at 7.30 p.m. ET, this is where you get to share your projects, your maker space, your tools, your, your retro 3D gear. printed projects. Everybody always asks, you guys should have a 3D printing show and tell. Well, this is it right here. We're always on there every week. Not just 3D stop printing, but like we said, everything there. You can stop by and say hi, uh, talk to Lamar and Phil, let them know what you're working on. Yep. Very cool. Right after that, shortly after that, uh, is Ask an Engineer. All open source news, hardware, new products. It's always question, a jam-packed show. Hour long. Hour long. Yeah. Phil Lamar doing, doing it, it up. up. Check Pretty it cool. out every week. OK. And that is it for this week. Again, don't forget to leave any comments or questions in any of the videos below, and we will answer them in a future show. OK. Well, until then, folks, remember to keep on making. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be here next week. All right, folks. And that's it. See you guys. <laughs> Bye, everybody.